Hey everyone, Paul Mann here and welcome to my videos on Practical Python. This is where we bring your Python skills to life. A lot of people have been asking me about encrypting files and strings with PyCrypto. PyCrypto is a collection of cryptographic modules for Python. It comes with secure hash functions and symmetric encryption algorithms. It hasn't been in development for quite some time and it's kind of getting phased out. However, I think the interest in it stems from its ability to encrypt files with strong AES encryption using a password. So that's exactly what I'll show you how to do in this video. If you're not sure what symmetric encryption is or where it fits into the whole encryption framework, you should take a look at my original video on symmetric encryption, which gives a super quick and simple overview. So first we'll need to install the PyCrypto library. This can be a bit tricky at times. So it's best to run pip3 list first to ensure that you don't have any conflicting encryption libraries. There are some known issues, for example, with PyCrypto and PyCrypto Dome. So that's one that you may need to remove if you have an issue. So once you figure that out, the installation is pretty straightforward. It's just pip3 install PyCrypto. I'm running uh, Python 3.8 here. I've had it running on 3.6 and 3.7 as well, so the version shouldn't be too much of an issue. Just watch out for the conflicts. So the first thing we'll do is install the crypto PyCrypto library, and there's only one import to do, and then we're using AES in this example. You can use other encryption algorithms as well. And I'm also going to import the hash lib from the Python libraries, and I'll explain why later. So to create the encryption object in PyCrypto, you need to input three variables. You use the AES new to create the new object, but we need three inputs into this. We need the key and we need the mode of encryption. And we also need what's called an, an IV or uh, initialization vector. So these are the three requirements. Because AES is a block cipher, the key has to be a standard length of either 16, 24 or 32. So this is a little bit troublesome because every time we create a key, we'd have to conform to that uh, byte requirements. So an easier way of doing that with the key is to simply hash a password that we create ourselves, and that'll give us an automatically a 32-bit, a 32-byte uh, key. So that's what we're going to do here. Keep in mind that the length of the password does impact the security of the key here as well. So a longer password is better. We also have to encode the password to convert it to bytes. So we can do that by using the encode function at the end. So let's print out the key just to show that A, we have one and that it's the right length. And there's our 32 byte key. So moving on, now we're going to create the mode and the mode we're going to use here is CBC. It's just a block cipher mode. It's cipher blockchain mode. The initialization vector also has to be 16 bytes, and this helps to randomize the ciphertext. Um, ideally, one of these should be created randomly after every, for every encryption. But for our purposes here, we just put a 16 character string in here. So now we have everything to create the cipher object. Next, we create the message that we're encrypting. This is the plain text. And because AES is a block cipher, 128-bit cipher, it's the 16 bytes, the message or the input that we put into the algorithm has to be in 16-byte chunks as well. So the message we have here, for example, has 23 bytes. So that's not going to work. We have to make that up to 32. We have to pad it to 32. And in order to do that, I need to create a function that takes our message and add some spaces or some characters to it to make it 32 bytes. So we'll create our function, and while the length of the message, the modulus of the message divided by 16 is not equal to zero, in other words, if our message, the size of it is not exactly divisible by 16, then we need to add some characters until it is. So we'll do this until the modulus is zero, and then we'll return the message with the padding. So now we'll create a variable, our padded message, and we'll make that equal to uh, the function, assign that to the function, and we'll send our message to the function. So basically we're sending our message to the function to pad it so that it is divisible by 16 bytes, the length of it. So now if we return the padded message and print the length of it, we should get 32 and we do. So now this block of text will work because 
it can be sent in 16 byte chunks to the algorithm. And notice when we print a padded message that we get the same message as we sent, but we have some additional characters at the end. So now we're going to create an encrypted text variable and we're going to run our cipher against our message to encrypt it with AES. And when we print that, we get a bunch of gibberish and that is our cipher text. So the next thing we need to do now is create a new file and decrypt that cipher message to back to our original message. So in the new file, we create all the same libraries and the password and key and mode and IV are going to be the same. They're going to need to be the same if we decrypt it. But in this case, we're going to create a decrypted text variable and use the cipher decrypt to decrypt the message that we had encrypted in the last file. And we'll copy in the message. Uh, this is obviously not an optimal way of doing this, but it's handy to show what we're doing here. But normally you would write that encrypted text out to a file so you could save it and decrypt it later. Now, when we print out our decrypted text, we should first of all get the decrypted text, but with the padding. And we do, as you can see, the comma on the right is all the way over and it's in byte format. So first, let's strip out the additional padding that was put during the encryption process. And as you can see, that's been done. And next, we want to decode the text back to regular. And there it is. Okay, that was strings encryption. Now we're going to move on to encrypting a file. So the file we're going to encrypt is MySecret Excel. It's an Excel file that we've used in other videos. It's a dummy template file that, but instead of using text this time, we're going to have to open a file and we'll open it in byte mode, RB. So we'll open our Excel file and we'll put that in the original file variable. And again, we're going to have to pad the file because it's unlikely that that file is exactly divisive by 16 bytes or the length of that file is divided by. So to get it into 16 bit chunk byte chunks, we will send it through our uh, routine, but we have to update it for files. And instead of adding strings to it, we're going to have to add bytes to it because this is a file. It's not like our message before. So now we're going to send a padded file. Um, we're going to add the padding and then return it to the encrypted message variable. So there's the encrypted message. We'll obviously need to write this out to a file to make it any use so we can encrypt it. And we'll write that out to a file called encrypted message. Should look on our project now and see the file and there it is on top. If we open it, it'll give us a lot of rubbish, but that's our Excel file that we brought in and encrypted. So now let's go and decrypt the file. We'll copy in, we'll create a new file in Python, in PyCharm, and we'll copy in the usual suspects again, um, all the stuff we need to create the cipher object. And this time we'll open up the encrypted file that we did the last time as a byte file. And we'll copy that data into a variable called encrypted file. So we'll copy the encrypted, decrypted text into a variable called decrypted file. So now we'll run the cipher decrypt this, paste in the um, encrypted file variable, and that should decrypt the file. We'll need to write this to another file, of course. Oh, I forgot to put the commas on the uh, RB. And then we need to save that file to another file so that we can open up and verify that it's working. So as you can see, this code could be a lot cleaner, uh, multiple open statements and the like, but it's just easier to explain the PyCrypto doing it this way in sequential order. But if we're writing this code, we would uh, either put this in a class, if you're familiar with that, or not at least put it in a uh, function that would take in the name of the file and open it. So we wouldn't need all of this, um, these lines of code. So we're going to write that to a file called decrypted And now when we run it, we should see the file pop up in our project list. And there it is on top, decrypted Excel. So if we double click on that, we should, oh, um, and this is a good example of uh, what not to do when you're decrypting files with AES you need to remove the padding that we put in in the original file or else the file will be corrupted. 
but let's run it again and now we should have a working excel file and it looks like we do so that's a lot of what you need to know to encrypt files and text with pi crypto the code used in this video can be found on my github repository at the link below um, i would suggest that if you're going to get serious about encrypting files with aes that you consider using pi crypto dome which is widely considered the continuation of pi crypto pi crypto itself has been more or less decommissioned and as i mentioned at the beginning of the video there's very little development if any in the last several years so i hope you've enjoyed this video and if you have please don't forget to share like and subscribe and i'll see you soon again thanks